Happy Halloween, everyone! Today, I bring you something spooky. The Ghost Catfish Cryptopterus Vitriolus. If you think a catfish is supposed to be a brownish benthic beast, this little fish is going to scare the daylights out of you as it bucks every catfish trend besides having barbels. Frightening. Anyway, let's dive into the dark waters of ghost catfish information. The first, most striking feature of the ghost catfish is its real thin, transparent body. Yes, those are its bones and organs you see, not an abstract pattern. Ironically, this standout feature of the ghost catfish is meant for camouflage. When you're skinny and transparent, it's tough for a predator to detect you in murky, dimly lit water. It also doesn't hurt that it's difficult to see in water as it is. Water absorbs and scatters light to a greater extent than air, so you can't see very far even the most pristine, clearest, stillest lakes. Becoming transparent, therefore, is a more viable method of camouflage for aquatic animals than those living on land, as the trait has evolved in several unrelated fish taxa. Although the process behind it hasn't been explored in great detail, the fish achieves its transparency by having less densely packed, but larger muscle fibers than related fishes in addition to its bigger thin body. These muscle fibers have a thin layer on their surface that helps reflect light. Said muscles also don't have much myoglobin, which is a substance that binds to iron and oxygen, while also giving muscle meat its signature pink coloration. The organs are compressed near the head to make more room for the transparent body. After all, the camouflage is less effective when a predator can see the dark remains of the ghost catfish's meals running down the length of its body. The ghost catfish turns a shade of opaque white upon death or illness, revealing a light patterning of black spots running down the length of the fish that helps break up its outline even more. This implies that transparency is a sign of good health in this fish. This glassy camouflage has a few drawbacks, however. Since the fish may have lesser quantities of substances like hemoglobin that help transfer oxygen in their blood, the ghost catfish may have a less efficient musculature than its more opaque close relatives. This trend of reduction carries over to the rest of the ghost catfish's physical features. Cryptopterus vitriolus has less prominent finish than other catfishes, possessing an anal fin that runs almost to the length of its body and a pair of pectoral fins of average size. All of its other fins have been either greatly reduced in size or faded into a ghostly memory. Cryptopterus translates to hidden wing, alluding to these fish's relative lack of finage. This fish gets around by delicately rippling its body like a phantom rather than the tail dominated swing method of most fish species. What a nice way to presumably save energy and stay stealthy. Furthermore, the ghost catfish only possesses two pairs of barbels. Two long maxillary barbels is obvious as most of the costumes that trick or treaters wear, and a pair of mandibular barbels harder to find than Bigfoot. Barbel reduction is a trend among many pelagic catfishes anyway, but it adds to the ghost catfish's signature look. Cryptopterus vitriolus is a native of river basins in southern coastal Thailand, ranging from the Isthmus of Kra all the way over to the Karbon Mom Mountains. This is a strangely disjointed distribution bisected by the Gulf of Thailand, suggesting that this fish had a wider distribution a long time ago, when global sea levels were lower. Unlike many catfishes, the ghost catfish has a diurnal, schooling, pelagic lifestyle. If this news is as surprising as finding a vampire in the daytime, save your reaction for when I talk about its closest relatives in a later section of the video. The river basins the ghost catfish inhabits are sluggish, murky, and filled with all manner of aquatic plants. 
Environments like this are suited to a transparent, low-activity fish such as this one. There's barely any current to exert itself against, and plenty of shelter to hide under in a school with fish 100 deep. As for their diet, goat catfishes feed on small aquatic invertebrates and the occasional fish fry. After all, goat catfishes are small themselves, reaching a maximum size of around 8 centimeters or 3 inches. Halloween candy has nothing on the snackability of a ghost catfish if you're a larger fish, so the life of a ghost catfish is a 24-7 haunted house with hundreds of its best friends. This time, the attractions really are about to get you. Good thing to freeze. Okay, I'll try to make the ghost catfish seem somewhat intimidating again, even though it never was, to be fair. Alright, picture yourself in a copepod drifting in a nearly still waters of Thailand's coast. It's warm. You're not even a centimeter long. Food and other planktonic bodies float all around you. You have little to think about, mostly because you barely have the mental capacity to do so. Life is just warm tropical vibes 24-7. Suddenly, you feel subtle ripples in the water on your long, delicate antenna. An army, nearly invisible, of bi-tentacle leviathan surround you. You reflexively dart away as quickly as you can to little effect. Powerless to escape, the long, stiff, dark tentacles sweep you into the waiting maw, lined with needle-like teeth. Suddenly, everything fades to black. Ghost catfish spawning habits are very little known, but it can be presumed that they are seasonal egg scatterers, much like other tightly schooling fishes. Like with the other fishes I've covered in depth on Featherfin films, the ghost catfish likely releases its gametes and gets on with life. No parental care or mate selection or anything. Just drop the extra weight and cross your invisible, non-existent fingers. Ghost catfishes have also proven sensitive to magnetic fields in laboratory experiments. This may be due to the large amount of electroreceptors present on the fish. Since the electroreceptors on Cryptopterus vitreolus have short canals connecting them to their transparent skin, the fish has been the common laboratory subject for scientists looking to understand the electroreception in fishes more clearly. Despite this being a holiday video, the compulsory taxonomy section still awaits to spook all of y'all with long names. Don't worry too much, because we have a case of mistaken identity and freaky relatives here. For the latter, the ghost catfish is a member of the family Siluridae, a medium-sized Eurasian catfish family. For those paying attention, Silurus glanus is the scientific name of the Wells catfish, one of the largest freshwater fish in the world and unironically a scarier fish than these cutie ghost catfish. Silurus glanus can reach a size of over 6 feet long and is a popular target for skilled anglers all over Europe. It's even a star of the Silver Stream, being featured in shows such as River Monsters as a beast the host has to fight for hours to even lift out of the water. At this point, I might as well reveal what makes Silurid catfish special. After all, they lent their entire name to the catfish order. Silurid catfish like the characteristic catfish dorsal fin spine that has deterred many potential predators. They also have fairly reduced finish except for a long based anal fin, as well as elongated laterally compressed bodies. Silurid catfishes also lack needle barbels, though other, less laid catfish families have lost these barbels too. Hmm. Don't these features sound familiar? Speaking of familiarity, if you've been in the aquarium hobby long enough, you might remember when the ghost catfish was known as Cryptopterus by Sirius. The original description of Cryptopterus by Sirius did not match what the common aquarium ghost catfish looked like very well. In 2013, a paper was written by ichthyologist Maurice Cotillat and Hyuk Yi-ng to finally get to the bottom of the ghost catfish mystery. Turns out, the fish known as Cryptopterus by Sirius was a different fish all this time. 
The true Cryptopterus bicirhis is also a fish found in Thailand as, much of, as well as much of Southeast Asia, but turns out it was never actually a transparent one found in the Aquaria since 1934. Cryptopterus bicirhis is a significantly larger, cloudy, translucent silver fish only a blind person could confuse with the ghost catfish. A similar fish known as Cryptopterus minor was also hypothesized to be the common aquarium ghost catfish, but that fish hails from Borneo and has a thicker body shape and more anal fin rays. Ng and Codlat realized that the ghost catfish millions of aquarists and scientists were familiar with was actually a fish undescribed by science. They christened the star of this story Cryptopterus vitreolus, with vitreolus meaning glassy. Cryptopterus vitreolus possesses a slight nuchal concavity, or a dent in the body around the fish's neck region, not shared with its nearest relatives, as well as being entirely transparent and having differing body proportions and fin ray counts from its closest relatives. Cryptopterus bicirhis has also been known to science the longest out of any member of the genus being discovered in 1840. It's likely since Cryptopterus vitreolus turns opaque upon death, and both fishes overlap in distribution with East Dutcher, scientists mixed up the identity of preserved specimens of Bicirhis and vitreolus. Cryptopterus Bicirhis has probably been imported by accident more than once, as some aquarium guides have implied that the ghost catfish grows larger than it actually does, and has the potential to eat smaller fish. This is conjecture, however, and the other members of Cryptopterus are very rare sites in home aquaria. Unsurprisingly, the ghost catfish is a perennial favorite in home aquariums. After all, who can resist a small transparent catfish? The readily found in most aquarium shops for a reasonable price belying the fact that every ghost catfish found inside of thigh river basins is wild caught. Therefore, the conservation status of these fascinating aquatic phantoms is potentially at risk. More research needs to be carried out on the status of ghost catfish populations. Nothing is scarier than extinction. Considerably less frightening is their ease of care as a pet. The most important thing to worry about besides water quality is getting a large group of them and having plenty of shaded areas that your charges can rest under. Like many catfishes, Cryptopterus vitreolus is not picky when it comes to feeding and readily accepts most foods given to aquarium fishes. The ghost catfish also doesn't require special water conditions as long as the water is clean and the pH isn't too high or low. Since the fish comes from murky black water areas, Dim lighting and or botanical extracts in the water will help the fish be at home. Completely non-aggressive, the ghost catfish will ignore fish well enough to be eaten, aka 98% of fish kept in the aquaria, and prefers to spend time with its own kind. Its lack of aggression means that any fish with a hint of boisterousness will bother your school of ghost catfish until they become ghosts themselves. Breeding the ghost catfish has occurred exactly once in captivity by a total accident. In 2012, Aquarist Cat Bolstad noticed a singular fry during routine tank maintenance. According to their report, the temperature in the tank fluctuated greatly thanks to egg treatment and heater failures, so this also implies that the ghost catfish may spawn seasonally. Overall, the ghost catfish is a fairly straightforward fish to take care of, as long as you make accommodations for its need for company, shelter, and low competition. Well, this wraps up the story of the specter of aquariums all around the world. Hopefully, you've come off with an extra appreciation of these especially non-catfish-like catfishes you can take with you as you go trick-or-treating, hand out candy, or go to a party or something. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Breath of Red Films content. Ooh.